Well, I've kind of had a bad day today. Um, I've been having trouble with the grounding, the negative terminals on my boat. Uh, with the Sterling battery to battery charger been getting like these really strange voltages like you know and as you know being having accurate voltages is kind of important uh, for LiPo 4 so I, I just I this project I've you know is, is too much just too much I, I wish that I didn't start it uh, but anyway I'll I think I found the solution and Hopefully it'll help you out if you've got the same kind of problem. So I'll just kind of review um, what my situation was, and I guess you can just stop the video anytime if you you know don't have the problem. But um, if you do have the problem, you'll probably be interested. All right, uh, stay tuned, and I'll show you what I've been doing and all the torture I've been going through. So we need to turn off the Sterling charger at 13.8 volts. And I'm using a charge controller to do that where I'm monitoring voltage on the, um, the system. And I'm setting the BMS2 input on the uh, Sterling high. So in LiPo 4, just 0.2 volts DC is a big deal. You really need to have accurate voltage for your charge controller to give the proper messages to the um, to the BMS uh, imp to input on the Sterling, and the Sterling has to have good um, input also. So on the Sterling, um, as you as you might remember, the the Sterling um, does have a voltage sense input to to it, um, and from from the battery, and and so it is supposed to keep track of the terminal voltage. With that, with the voltage sense um, input, so the negative um, bus wiring is what caused the um, the issue with me. So I've got a flooded lead acid battery that has you know negative buses in it, um, and I what I thought I could do was just connect um, the um, the my my uh, lipo 4 battery uh, via the BMS onto those onto that bus but then what I found was when I used that bus as a negative reference uh, for my charge controller is it for the negative um, voltage reference to for, for my um, charge controller voltage I got this really high voltages when I was when I was uh, when I was uh, having current if there was no current then I got normal voltages so my terminal voltages were like reading 13.4 and my um, charge controller voltage and my sterling um, you know uh, voltage um, which was is really important the sterling needs to know what the battery terminal voltage is so it can charge the battery it was it had all this you know high voltage and really weird floating voltage depending on how much current I was pushing, the weirder the voltage got. I'm gonna document a problem that I'm having with the battery to battery charger where I didn't, I don't think I used the correct um, grounding. So here's my lithium ion battery and I've got the lead acid batteries over here um, in, this, in this locker. So what I'm doing is I'm, this meter is measuring the, um, the uh, terminal voltage on the lead acid battery. And then I have an independent meter that's running, uh, that's pretty much the same meet, uh, calibration, and it's measuring um, the, um, the 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 voltage using, um, uh, uh, you know, what effectively is what the the chargers reading the voltage off of, and so these these voltages right now are um, going to be pretty much the same. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn, I'm going to disable the BMS. Uh, BNS, BMS is now, pre, pre, uh, line is now uh, preventing the charger from actually running. It's on. The charge is on, but um, it's not uh, going to be charging because I told it not to charge. So I'm going to flip this switch and let it run. And then what you're going to, what you're going to see, it's going to be a delay for a couple of seconds. And then it's going to start, it's going to start charging, right? And so I'm getting 3.7 volts now 
um, it's reading 3.7 on the the, the charger is reading 3.7 but if if I look at the battery terminals I'm I'm only I'm reading 13.4 uh, so I'm off by a, a, a ways on you know what what the voltages are so I think what's the the problem is that I don't have uh, enough ground I, I'm, I'm sort of borrowing my um, shore power ground um, so I'm going to um, let you know what what happens after this. I'm going to do an experiment. So here's the problem with uh, my my system. It's got hysteresis, unfortunately, because my voltage is not correct on this when I'm running the charger, uh, and so it's just cycling on and off. It's terrible. So if I take the current down, let's see what happens. I'm changing my current on my output and let's see if I still suffer with the same issue uh, yes I'm still suffering with the same issue um, what's happening is the voltage I'm reading when it's charging is artificially high it's higher than my um, my term my battery terminal voltage so it's it's wanting to cycle more too much so I gotta figure out how to fix that problem if I take the if I take the um, you know I let I just let it free run and don't put the BMS input on it um, it um, it as you can see it looks like it the the voltage is pretty pretty darn high anyway uh, I'll let you know what happens. So now I'm gonna talk about the solution uh, so we were using the the common buses that I had for my uh, lead acid battery um, for the references for the for the um, for the negative for the Sterling. But I found that what you need to do is hook the Sterling directly to the BMS C minus um, lead. Of course, we we can't hook it to the B minus because then we lose a lot of the the good stuff that the BMS is supposed to do disconnecting um, so the BMS's job is disconnecting the B minus um, from the C minus if, if we get over cell voltage but we need to uh, make sure that we connect the Sterling directly to this terminal on the BMS otherwise um, if we connect to the, these other um, buses, we're going to get this, those strange voltage readings, and we're not. And it's just cr it's crazy the voltage readings you get. Similarly, um, so then then the voltage sense that comes out of the the LiPo four battery, um, if you're using the it, the Sterling, will use the correct ground reference, the correct negative reference, and, and it's going to read the correct voltage. Similarly, we have a problem where we we're implementing a charge controller that turns off the um, the Sterling using the BMS2 input. We need to also make sure that that charge controller that reads voltages has this same C minus input into into it. Then everything is going to work this voltage and the and the um, the, the voltage between the terminal lead voltage on the lipo batter battery and the sterling are going to all agree and the charge controller is all going to agree but you need to make sure that you ground everything there yes then after you after you uh, terminate there you'll have a separate lead off this and then that can connect uh to all your other um to, to the rest of your um your um, you know your your lead acid batteries but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to terminate it there um, so what I do is then um, I just uh, have a switch that uh, switches between um, uh, flooded lead acid and um, the lipo battery um, so I just have a, a switch and then that 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 basically runs my DC panel. I I select what, it, whether I want to do lipo or whether I want to do uh, flooded lead acid. Anyway, I hope this helped. So I tried to do everything at home, 
thinking, tested everything out, thinking that it was going to, you know, help me and I'll just be able to slam it in on the boat. But it didn't work, you know, because I, I had the, fit, fit the lead acid batteries and the charge buses and, you know, it just didn't go as planned. Um, so I don't know whether you should do this. If you're if you're thinking you're on the fence, whether you're going to do this project, maybe you don't do it because I just I just got beat up the last couple of days. I mean, I think it's all fixed now. Um, but you got to have good testing, right? Because you got to go test, you got to go uh, cycle through, you got to do shore power, and then you got to test your alternator and at different um, charge levels. So there's got to be a lot of testing that you're going to have to do when you. I did all this testing here on my bench at home, but you know, the boat is totally different, right? So um, I don't know. You might want to not do this project. <laughs> anyway. I'll see you on the next video.